Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Group, and I've got another product review for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm taking a look at the Silverstone PF120, a 120mm liquid CPU cooler. Now, this is actually a follow-up to a long series of videos that I have put together on the channel since September 2019, looking at how to optimize cooling in a small form factor chassis, specifically the SG13 Mini ITX case from Silverstone, which is extremely popular among enthusiasts due to its low price, around $50, and its very small size, around 12 liters. Now, that small size does come with challenges, and one of those is keeping a CPU cool. Now, back in September of 2019, I looked at a lot of low-profile air coolers, and among all of those, the NHL-12S from Mactua was the clear winner. It comes in at $50, and it's a great cooler and works very well in this case, with some caveats. I wouldn't use this cooler in this case with a CPU rated at above 65 watts. Yes, I know the cooler is rated above that, but not inside this case. It's just too tight inside. There's not enough airflow. So in a follow-up review, I looked at what I could do to improve the CPU cooling performance inside this chassis, and I found that the Hydro 860, a liquid cooler from Corsair, definitely improved CPU temperatures, but at the expense of noise. The stock fan that this cooler comes with is really not that great. It's extremely loud. And in a follow-up review to this one, I actually found that equipping it with a third-party fan like an Arctic P12 or an Actua NF-A12X25 could dramatically reduce noise levels while keeping the temperatures the same or even better. So that seemed like a perfect solution. But that brings me to why I'm testing the PF120 today. Well, as much as I like the H60 with an upgraded fan, it's a really expensive solution at over $100 if you use the Noctua fan. And I figured, well, why don't I look at a more modern competitor, the PF120, to see if it could at least match the H60 in terms of thermal performance, perhaps beat it in terms of noise, which wouldn't be that hard, and also offer a new feature, ARGB lighting, which the PF120 has and the Corsair does not. It comes in at the same price, $80, so it really just has to match the 860, if not beat it, in order to become a new favorite in this case. So without further ado, let's take a look at what the PF120 has to offer and see if it does improve upon all the coolers I've tested before in the SG13 case. I'll catch you in a second. So when you take the cooler out of the box, you'll find that the fan is not yet attached and you'll need to decide how you're gonna attach it to the radiator. You can actually either attach it as an intake fan blowing through the top of the radiator or you can attach it to the back and blow out, out of your case. I'm actually gonna be attaching it to the front of my SG13, so I want it to be pulling air in and blowing it through that radiator. Now keep in mind that when you set up your radiator as an intake, you use the same screw to affix the fan as you do to affix the radiator. So I'm actually screwing through both here to set the radiator in position. Next up, I attach the cooling block to the CPU. I've already applied my thermal paste and I'm lowering this into position using the AMD clips. Note that it comes with the Intel pre-installed, so you'll need to pull these out of the bag. Luckily, they're really easy to use. Using the standard AMD mounting brackets, I can just get this into position and I don't even need to access the back of my motherboard. The only challenge with this installation was the hoses. Note how they are quite stiff and they tend to want to go up. I have to bend them into position here, and in a moment I'll show you kind of the drawbacks of this and the tension you're going to have to deal with when installing this. Now once the SFX power supply is lowered into position, it looks like there's a lot of space in this case, but taking a look from above, you can see that those hoses are pressed up against the backplate of my GPU, so it is pretty tight. All right, now that we have the PF120 installed in the SG13 chassis, let's get into some benchmarking using the Ryzen 5 3600 CPU. Starting with the idle benchmark with the Silverstone PF120 on the right side of this table, it's actually doing quite well. Even though it's spinning at 1140 RPM, it's much quieter than the Hydro H60, and it's much, much quieter than the NTO6 Pro from Silverstone, which is an obsolete air cooler from my point of view, and it's great that Silverstone has a new offering for those interested in cooling in small form factor chassis. Now, the PF120 is a little bit louder than the best air coolers on the market, but I'm not too concerned about that because at least it's quieter than the Wraith Stealth, so you know if you're upgrading from that cooler, you're not going to be suffering in terms of noise levels at idle. Turning now to my CPU-Z stress test benchmark, we see the Silverstone PF120 leading the way again in terms of thermals at 63 degrees. It is by far the coolest of the coolers in this test, but unfortunately, it's also the loudest at 53 decibels, even coming ahead of the very loud Silverstone NT06 Pro and Hydro H60 from Corsair. 
Now you can blame the fan on this cooler at nearly 2200 RPM. It's very, very high RPM. That's too fast in my opinion. So we know we can tune that out a little bit and I will turn to fan normalization in a moment. But overall, I think that this is a fairly good result if you need this kind of thermal performance. Finally, we turn to Cinderbench R15, which is an extreme benchmark, much more intense than even CPU-Z. It is a shorter run, but what it does is hit the CPU with an extreme load right from the start, and it penalizes CPU coolers that can't ramp up quickly. One of the coolers that does really well with transient loads like this is the Noctua NHL-12S. It keeps its composure stays very cool and very quiet in this test, but of course the liquid coolers are even cooler. The problem is that they are extremely loud, and the PF120 is again the loudest one in this roundup. Just to give you a sense of the significance of those noise levels, I've put together some audio recordings and I'll play those for you now. So I'm going to give you a two-in-one here in terms of both the aesthetics and the noise. I'm just going to let this go through a rainbow cycle with the RGB lighting in that front fan. And then I'm going to show you what it sounds like at idle and at full load. So this is at idle. It bounces around a little bit between about 31 and 33 decibels. Then I'm going to switch it over to load. All right, based on those benchmarks, I think it's pretty clear that the PF120 is actually better than the H60, but I know there are those of you out there who will say, what did you prove? So what? It was a little bit cooler. It was also louder. All right, I've got more data for you. I ran a bunch more benchmarks. First of all, I normalized the RPMs of the fan to bring the noise level down on the PF120. Then I did a decibel normalized test, which I will explain to you in a moment. And finally, I slapped on the NF-A12X25 fan from Noctua, the best radiator fan in the business according to my previous benchmarking, and I show you what these coolers can do with this fan installed. Let's take a look. All right, first I normalize the RPM by bringing the PF120 stock fan down to 1834 RPM. That's as close as I could come to the Hydro H60 stock fan, which is at 1776. When you're dealing with PWM settings, they're always a percentage of the maximum RPM, so you can't dial in an exact RPM level. This is pretty close, but the results are very clear. 66 degrees for both, and yet the PF120 is far quieter at 47 decibels. It's a win, but that's not all. Let's look at decibel normalized levels. Here I actually attached an upgraded fan to the Corsair Hydro H60, the Arctic P12, and at 43.5 decibels, the Corsair Hydro H60 just matched the PF120 at 67 degrees. I didn't use the Corsair Hydro H60's stock fan for this decibel normalized rating because there was no way it would even come close. It is simply a much louder fan. And in my final test, I actually attached the NF-A12X25 fan from Noctua to both radiators to test which one could come out ahead. And actually, they came out essentially the same. The PF120 is a little bit louder, which must be either due to slightly more pump noise versus the H60 or perhaps a little bit more turbulence through its radiator fins. Either way, these are very closely matched. The radiators and pumps are essentially the same on these two coolers. So... If you wanted to go with a custom fan anyway, you could go with either of these radiators. All right, I think that just about does it. The PF120 is a winner. It beats every low-profile air cooler, including my favorite model, the NHL-12S from Noctua, and it also easily beats the Corsair Hydro H60 liquid cooler. Now, the key to its success is its fan, and that's not much of a surprise given my previous benchmarks of radiator fans using the H60. I looked at a whole range of brands and the Noctua NF-A12X25 is the best and it drastically increases performance while reducing the noise levels. So what Silverstone has done here is given this cooler a really good fan. It's not the best. Noctua clearly can beat it, but at $80 you're getting a really decent fan, a good radiator, and ARGB effects. And that's the total package. I don't think you can easily beat that at this price point. So I do commend Silverstone for coming out and being aggressive with its new PF120. I think it's a great choice with the SG13 chassis. And in particular, you can actually use and enjoy the ARGB effects because you mount that fan up front and see it through the grill. I thought that was a really cool effect. So overall, I give this four and a half out of five stars. It's really a nearly perfect 
product. I do think it's a little bit loud at maximum RPM, but you can tone that down using a custom fan setting and it still performs really well, much better than any air cooler and better than the H60, which is a top selling cooler on the market at this point. I think the PF120 deserves to win that crown soon from Corsair. So if you see both of these out there for $80, I think you know which one to choose. It's the PF120 from Silverstone. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. I will be sure to get back to you. If you did like the video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate that, and I will catch you next time.